The brunch with the best ratio of likes to effort is crepes. Now you probably thought I was gonna say pancakes, but the thing about pancakes is everybody wants them fluffy, so you gotta be gentle with the batter, make sure not to overmix it, maybe even fold in some egg whites. But the thing about crepes is, much like the five-year-old version of me, they actually benefit from being overbeaten. You see, the thing about crepes is that they're really, really thin. And in order for something that thin to retain its structural integrity, you have to develop a lot of gluten in the batter, which means a lot of mixing. Or in the lazy man's case, blending. All you gotta do, get your blender, throw in a cup of flour, a cup and a half, of whole milk, a big mm, two finger pinch of kosher salt, big two finger pinch of just plain sugar, along with two eggs, and that's it. Crepe batter is really basic at its core because crepes are really more about uh, the fillings and what's inside. So just pop the lid on, blend it for, I don't know, 30 seconds. Once this is blended up, you just throw it in the fridge overnight. You had enough. Uh, foresight to know that you were gonna make these the next morning, right? What happened here is that you made all that gluten and if you give it some time in the fridge to relax, it'll result in a better texture. Maybe some separation will occur, but it's nothing a five second blitz won't fix. Say you don't have enough time, maybe put it in the fridge for 30 minutes while you get everything else ready. When it comes time to actually start cooking your crepes, all you need is a little bit of butter in a nonstick pan and your batter. Now, the amount of batter that you put in is gonna vary depending on your pan. I've got a big fat 13 incher here, so I need about two thirds of a cup of batter, but say you've got a more standard nine or 10 inch pan, probably only need a quarter cup. It's better to err on the side of not enough batter in the pan than too much. So all you gotta do is grip the batter in one hand, grip the pan in the other, and as soon as the batter makes contact with metal, start swirling it around and make sure that you only have one layer of batter all the way around. If you end up with a little bit of excess that pools up in the pan, just pour it back into the blender. Et va frickin' la, my dudes. Perfectione. You can tell the crepe is ready to flip because it started to dry out on the edges. It's curling away from the pan. So what I like to do is just loosen it up a little bit with a silicone spatula. You can tell that it's fully unstuck when you can shimmy it around like this. And you could use a spatula, try to flip it over, but I like to scoot it past the lip of the pan just like this. Maybe let the edge cool off a little bit and just use two hands to flip it with my fingers. And really it only needs to cook on this side for about five or 10 seconds. Slide it off into a plate, fold it up, do the rest of them. Whoa. These fingers have been burnt by years of practice. I don't even have the sensation of touch anymore. Got a big fat stack of crepes all folded up, ready to go. It's time to talk toppings. Now, everybody loves Nutella walnut banana. You cannot go wrong with that. It is the definitive crowd pleaser. Just make sure you toast up your walnuts beforehand to get the most flavor for your money. Nuts ain't cheap. My favorite way to top crepes is lemon three ways. Lemon curd dotted around the dish, lemon zest grated on top, a little bit of powdered sugar. Serve it with a lemon cheek on the side so that when you eat it, you can squeeze the lemon on top of the powdered sugar and it mixes up into a delicious, citric light frosting, and there are just as many savory options as there are sweet. Cubed up ham, Gruyere cheese, a little bit of sauteed mushrooms, Mwah, why not? Another reason I like to go with the triangle fold instead of the rolled crepe is if you did go the savory route and you got cheese melting out over here, it'll crisp up in the pan into a little crown of crispy cheese we like to call a frico. So get out there, get your frico on, and stop paying $13 at a brunch spot for a dollar's worth of food that you know now how to make at home.